so it talks about the struggles that my family had in the beginning because my mom was only 14 when she met my father and he, how old was your father he was 22. Mm. i don't know if he knew how young my mother was but mm -hmm. i don't know how he couldn't because she was really petite my mom okay. yeah she was like four feet 11 and even at that time she probably was maybe 80 some pounds so she was little mm -hmm. and my dad he's six three mm -hmm. yeah he's a big mm -hmm. he's a tall he was was mm -hmm. tall guy mm -hmm. and they met at a um a talent show at east tech really my mom i don't think should have been there for one and my dad was already too old to be yeah, he at the school been there. right really? <laughs> right he should have been there and sure. she's the one who caught his attention and that's the beginning of the story mm -hmm. and they had a whirlwind love affair i don't know if you can say that but she wound up getting pregnant at 14 and he disappeared because he got he, he was into some trouble he had been robbing some banks mm. and he had to get ghost as fast as he could and he wound up getting caught on about maybe i want to say a mm -hmm. year and a half later and he wanted to go into prison. So I was about one and a half years old when he went to prison. Wow. Okay. He went to prison, federal prison for those bank robberies. How many banks he robbed? Two. <laughs> <laughs> it's kind of funny. I talk about it in the, in the book because my grandmother, she had to fill in a lot of gaps for mm -hmm. me. And then I met him when I was much older and he filled in some gaps too. By the time I started to find out a little bit about the story, my mom was already gone, but yeah. And so it was, it was just, my mom was somebody who didn't let, as my grandmother say, let the grass grow under her feet. So after she was pregnant with me, she met my sister's father. Okay. And I thought for most of my life, that was my real dad. And because he was there when I was born, made me a part of his family mm -hmm. to this day. Those are my nieces and nephews, okay. uncles, and not nieces and nephews, cousins. His nieces and nephews are my cousins, brothers and sisters, my aunts, and uncles, mother and father, my grandparents. I mean, his grand, his mother, I only know her as my grandmother. Wow. Yeah. So, so when did you find out he wasn't your father? I'll talk about this in the book too, but it was, my mom told us, and what happened is that my sister and I ran track for the summer. Okay. And we had to get our birth certificates and we were living with my, my grandma Lula, his mom at that time. And uh, my grandmother got the birth certificates, but I don't even think she knew what was on our birth certificate. So my sister saw the birth certificates. Wow. She saw her, my mom's name for mom from her, saw dad's name daddy's name for her and then when she saw mine she only saw my mother's name on mine and dad and for father it was blank wow and so she was kind of confused mm -hmm. she's like hey, you know, how come daddy's name isn't on michael's so she went and asked my grandmother and my grandmother didn't say anything mm. and at this time my mom was still alive so and we were still visiting with her off and on so she asked my mother Mm -hmm. And my mother said, I got something to tell you guys. <laughs> As to, yeah, you know what? I, I, I'm going to tell you how I could relate to that. <laughs> I was, hell, I think I just found out, I think it was maybe four or five years ago that somebody said that the guy who I thought was my father wasn't my father. Wasn't. Oh, yeah. And I'm like 50, like wow. when this dude shows up. And, and I'm going to tell you, I'm going to just say, we're going to get back on your thing. Uh, when you find out, and I'm going to keep this 100, when you find out that you may have an exchange relative or something out there, you really hope for the best. You right? do. You hope that, I hope that motherfucker is I, Bill Gates. <laughs> <laughs> when my mom told me, I was thinking, I, cause I, I figured that there was something different. Be, my, if you see my sister and I, mm -hmm. you would know that we don't have the same two parents because my sister is really fair skin. I'm, I'm talking about fair skin. She is almost sometimes almost pale mm -hmm. and has hazel eyes. Right. And so I'm quite, obviously our complexions are way different. And then my, my dad, I call him dad cause I don't mm -hmm. know what other name to use. We just had different personalities, right? different interests, the whole thing. And it was just always this disconnect between us. Mm -hmm. And so when my mom told me, I wasn't too surprised, but then like you, I'm thinking, who is my dad and where is he? Right. I'm thinking one day he's going to ride up in here in a, on a, in a Cadillac, right. take me out to Pepper Pike, that's right. my house, <laughs> exactly. him and his wife and kids. Exactly. exactly. Yeah. But that wasn't the story. What do you say? <laughs> I ended up with some old buster. Lived over off uh, Cedar. 
I'm like, Cedar, hundred first to see that. And, and I, I call him a buster because I'll talk about that one other day, but he, okay. he, he wasn't, and yeah, he still ain't Jack. Yeah. So back to your story and going back to you about your memory. So I can totally relate uh, when you talk about getting surprised and thinking one thing is something else, but throughout your book and throughout your story. You had plenty of those. Oh uh, yeah, a, a, a plenty a lot of, of you know. So of. let me let's talk about this. I want to talk about some of the what you would say was your worst experience as a mm -hmm. child growing up. Is something I know you talk in your book and you mentioned in as we talk a lot about your mom dying and that kind of thing. And I, I know that, but let's really give me some of the things that you think that really you can think of that you think was just really bad as when you was growing up. I mean, you know, I talked about my mom's size and just for clarification purposes, my stepdad, he was, you know, slightly bigger than me, but not as big as my biological father. He was about six feet and maybe about 180 pounds, but my mom real small. And so I have some, you know, vivid memories. Uh, as a kid of him being just brutal to my mm. mom. And uh, I would see, you know, I would hear first my mom screaming and yelling for help. Sometimes it, it would awake me at night and then I would run to where I hear the screams coming from mm -hmm. only to see the man who I thought was my father, pick my mom up and slam her on the floor mm. or slam her up against the wall or slam her on the bed. And then at times I would see him take his knee and put it into her chest mm. at times he would stomp her, punch her, slap her, strangle her. And I, as a kid, I'm thinking that parents are supposed to love each other. They're supposed to protect each other. And how old were you around? I was four and this happened from the time I was four all the way up until I was 11. Mm. And the only reason why I stopped when I was 11, because he went to prison. Wow. And he went to prison, not for being my mom, but for aggravated burglary. <laughs> that, so, he was out still in tune. Yeah. <laughs> these two role models I'm supposed to have these father figures. They, yeah, they, now, what was he was breaking into houses? He was breaking into houses because of his drug addiction. Oh, he, so he had a drug problem. So did my mom. Okay. My life was complete chaos. Right. Mm -hmm. So I was watching that. And then because I was the oldest, mm -hmm. I was responsible for trying to, you know, help my mom heal after mm -hmm. all of the beating. Mm -hmm. So. I was getting her to face towel to wipe the blood up. I was getting her paper towel or a napkin uh, to wipe the blood, getting her a face towel, put ice in it so she could bring the swelling down. I had to watch the lady who I thought was one of the most beautiful women in the world always have to hide her bruises with makeup mm -hmm. or put these sunglasses on because my dad had blackened her eyes. Watching that as a kid, that, that was horrific. And then the, the drug abuse. Like I said, drug addiction. Drug. You know, that's a whole nother monster by yeah. itself. You know, because know, once he's gone, mm -hmm. then now you think everything out. And now here comes the real demon is yeah. the drug addiction. The drug. But I saw both of them engaging in it mm -hmm. while he was there. They would, I, and I'll talk about this in the book in terms of that, the smell from them burning the drugs. Mm -hmm. And then they always, they had the tools up on the, up on their dresser. So when I would go in the room to go get the TV, there's the drug pair. What was they right doing? Right there. Smoking or? Oh, no, they were shooting up. They were shooting up. They wow. were shooting up. Wow. Yeah. And my mom, in addition to the bruises and stuff on her, I, I saw all the marks on her arms, mm -hmm. on her on her legs. I saw the marks on my stepdad's mm -hmm. um, arms. Mm -hmm. And it was, it's just, I don't know how a kid or parents can put their kids through that, but that addiction had a, I had a, a, a tremendous hold on both of them where that was their complete focus and a lack of support and awareness mm -hmm. of, I mean, for me and my sister. Yeah, so, and that's is hard, especially IV drug users, mm -hmm. man, when they, um, using that and, uh, heroin use and that kind of thing is really hard it and, mm -hmm. and, and, and it's tough on everything. It's tough to kick it. It's tough uh, for the whole thing. So I can imagine that was terrible. You say you grew up in the Longwood. <laughs>